the greatest find the middle number. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 numbers. And when there's 15, the middle number would be the eighth number because there'd be seven on each side of it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 68, correct? That's the median. Now, if you're drawing your box and whisker plot as you do this, here is what it would look like. Here at 68, at 68, would be the very start, the very exact center of your boxes. That doesn't mean that it's just, it is the, it's going to be the middle number in that whole set there. Okay? So that was step one. Number two, we're finding the lower quartile. Remember yesterday I talked about really all a box and whisker plot is, is you're cutting the data into, into what? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Can't we do two number twos? You're separating and making it into four quadrants. Okay, four quartiles is it called. We're finding the first quartile, and the way that you do that is Okay, you find the median, as it says here, of the left side values, of the left side of the median you just found. In other words, this. Here are the numbers that are left. I'll do this in yellow. You need to find the median of this to find the lower quartile. Sorry, that should be in between. In which case that is, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. The middle of seven, Emma Christ, is like four. One, two, three, four. Again, this is the middle because there's three numbers on this side and three numbers on that side. So 52 is the first quartile, or what they call here, what? The lower quartile. Okay? And that would mean here at 52, I suppose I should have cut this into numbers here. Here is 70, 80, 90, 100. What do we got here? 50, 40, 40 30, 20, 10, I guess. Let's just do that. So here at 52, here at 52, which is where right here, 60, 50, you're going to, at 52, you draw another. And this is your first box. This box right here is your first box. And that is the lower quartile. Or as they put what, Q1 there? Do they put Q1 there? Lower quartile. Then you do the same thing for the right side. Same thing on the other side which means you find the fourth number, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is 87, and you do the same thing there. 70, 80, 87 would be close to being right here. That's your other box. And that is the upper quartile. Upper Q. This is lower Q, upper Q. And then, well, I don't know if they want to find it to do that. And then where do you suppose the extremes come from? It's pretty simple after that because you just take the lowest number. That's going to make your whisker on this side, which is 18, which is 50, 40, 30, 10. At 18, right about here, you just put a little dot, make your whisker. And at 100, you put a little dot and make your whisker going that way. This is the upper extreme, and this is the lower extreme. And there is your box and whisker plot. So what do you need? We have the median, the lower quartile, the upper quarter, the upper extreme, and the lower extreme. And one last thing we have to actually talk about, as soon as you get that ready. Anybody? 
The last thing we talk about is on the back of this sheet, which is called the inter interquartile range. Inner quartile range. Well, if it says it's the range, what do you suppose it is? It's going to be the difference between what two numbers do you suppose? Jeremy Force? Right. It's going to be the range with these. It's going to be the range that makes up these, this whole inside box. Okay, so you subtract, take 87, subtract 56. 21 is the range of the inner quartiles. And the significance of that is, you know, what falls in between these two boxes? Half of the numbers, this is like the middle half of the numbers. The middle half of the numbers fall in between those two boxes. You know, the middle half of these numbers from here to here, that's all the numbers that fall between those two boxes. <laughs> What? This is 52. Oh, and this was, I did my subtracting wrong anyways. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, people. How about 35? <laughs> That's almost humorous. At some point, somewhere. Like the paper says, the IQR is a very useful measurement. It is useful because. It is less influenced by extreme values. It limits the range to the middle 50% of the values. In other words, this, kids, I think what they're getting at with that is when you look at the middle 50% of any set of data, like if I were looking at your math scores or anything, your language scores, your reading scores, if you take the chunk out of the middle, it's a more accurate measurement of what the entire class is than if you get these people up here that are incredibly brilliant at math, or maybe some of these people over here who struggle at math more. The middle of data, you know, when you put it in order from least to greatest, is more probably reflective of what the class is, just because it is the middle part. You take out the lower extremes, and you take out the upper extremes, and this is a better representation of really, you know, we should do it with some test sometime, and then you, you know, you should maybe see that. How many people find that that was probably one of the most thoroughly enjoyable lessons you've ever had? <laughs> I think you probably would. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Shoo-poo. All right, with that being said, then, 